about probably 40 to 50 minutes uh, talking about uh, electric energy and uh, I actually introduced this uh, new terms here so but then I will clarify it later uh, what exactly I meant with our strategics for electric motor system in industry okay um, okay uh, Mr. Aaron has given an uh, introduction of me I think that is very lengthy uh, in fact so I'm I'm now uh, at the moment we are a little bit uh, uh, active in uh, doing research on the uh, energy related. So recently we are actually working on uh, uh, second life batteries for PV uh, energy storage system. So that is the current uh, project that we are working on uh, MMU. Hopefully that in the future we can have more talk on that. Okay. So uh, let's start with the um, presentation. As uh, Mr. Aaron has actually mentioned that if you have any questions, you can just put it at the uh, chat and then uh, later after the end of the session, I will be going through one by one. Uh, hopefully I can answer all the questions, right? Okay, now first, uh, before we go further, um, okay. <clears throat> um, I'll just give you some introduction uh, as usual that uh, in industries, I think this is uh, applicable or this is true for most of the countries, uh, as long as uh, if it is a country that is, uh, the economy is so much related to or dependent on the industries. Uh, about 42, okay, in Malaysia, 42% of the energy that is generated is actually consumed by industries, right? Uh, and if you walk into the industry, uh, then if you look at the electricity bill, you will notice that you know if you if you do a, a detailed study of uh, where the energy goes within the industry, you will notice that at least minimum of fifty percent, if it is not more, that fifty percent of the energy that comes that consumed by the industry is always uh, comes from the motor system. So that is very huge, okay, very huge because uh, we are talking about uh, even a walk. 5% savings in the electric motors that gives us a, a lot of savings for the industry for the company itself and also at the national level we are talking about uh, reduction in the generation that means we are talking about uh, reduction in the co2 emission and so on that's the reason why if you notice uh, in malaysia particularly in fact in all the other countries as well the energy commission has actually worked on uh, ways Okay, they have come up with a lot of policies, uh, even a standards, uh, which I will be sharing in this talk as well, that, that to look into how we can actually minimize um, the energy from the electric motor system, right? Now, okay, so uh, in Malaysia, again, I want to share this. Uh, again, this is the motivation why energy commissions are very particular. In fact, uh, they are very, very uh, concerned about uh, reducing the energy consumption by the industry, particularly for the motor system, because we know that large amount of energy is being consumed by the electric motors. So because we see that in Malaysia, for instance, we are talking about most of the generation is coming from the gas use of our fuel. It's actually a gas and a coal. And you know that both of these are not a clean energy. That means there's a lot of uh, environmental impact. There's going to be a lot of CO2 emission. And therefore, um, it is important for us to look at all the areas, okay? Talking about energy efficiency, I think the whole world now is talking about energy efficiency. So when you talk about industry, number one in the list is usually the electric motor system. Because, because as I told you that the bigger portion of the energy is consumed by the electric motor system. Now. Okay, so let's uh, let me give you a design, uh, the, the definition of this because in fact the our strategy I don't want you all to have a wrong concept of our energy because you know maybe you have a wrong you got a wrong point a wrong uh, perception or wrong idea of what why I put this word in fact this is actually a business uh, terms okay business people use this term they call it our strategy okay. Because uh, when we talk about managing the motor system now, we are actually talking about a business. Okay? It's actually about business. We're talking about, at the end of the day, uh, minimizing the cost, OK, 
okay, um, uh, improving or increasing the profit margin of the company. So eventually everything talk about a business plan, okay? So our strategic that I I uh, looking at this because in the in the industry now, okay, when they approach us, they talk about they say, hey, come on, you see my bill now is two hundred thousand ringgit every month. And when we do a study, we found like at least under thousand ringgit every month. You are actually paying out of just for electric motor systems. That means the um, if you look at from business point of view for the industry, of course they are producing something. They are actually producing product. They are producing some kind of uh, obviously uh, whether it's in in terms of pieces or in terms of kilogram or in terms of in terms of. Uh, a liter, gallon, whatever. So they are producing some kind of uh, what you call um, product, and that product, obviously, in order for the company, the industry to stay competitive, okay, stay competitive in the market. So obviously, they are going to do some kind of benchmarking. All of them, they do that. So when they do benchmarking, obviously, they are going to look at how do I stay competitive. In other words, can I can I uh, keep my product value okay my my wholesale value uh, so that uh, you know the consumer or the the retailers will actually come to me rather than my competitor uh, so the major contribution of this profit margin or the price of the uh, the product uh, actually comes from the energy cost it comes from the energy cost and therefore they will be looking at this term called specific energy okay they will call specific energy and this is not a, a, a new term for electrical engineers specific energy so that means they want to know uh, how much kilowatt hour i'm actually consuming for every one piece not pieces sorry every one piece that is produced or every one kilo that is produced or every one liter that is produced because if i can keep this minimum if I can keep this minimum, that means I can either increase my profit margin and therefore I will be able to stay competitive in the market. So this is actually a business plan. Now that means when we talk about our strategy, what the business uh, people in the industry, because you know, as an auditor or even as an engineers in industries, what happened now? now? I think everyone will agree with me that, you know, as engineers, we come up with all kind of technology, all kind of, uh, 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 solutions, uh, uh, technical solutions, you know, and we always propose it to the uh, people in in, uh, in the industry who are the, the top management. And usually, this top management they are more concerned about the business, business money. money. At the end of the day, is about, about profit margin and you know, uh, savings and profit margin. margin. And therefore, when you talk to them, yeah. so obviously you before you can actually propose something so i'll be sharing today, today what are the options that we have what are the things that we can do so that we can get maximum out of the motor system maximum when i say maximum means i am actually looking at the ways to minimize this specific energy the means if uh, now currently you are talking about for example taking one kilowatt hour uh, to produce one piece can i reduce it to 0 0.5 or 0 0.7 kilowatt hour per piece so i'm trying to minimize the specific energy because because when i do that that i can directly convert into a ringgit into a dollar and i can tell them you see when i'm doing this i actually looking at this much of savings and this much of improvement in the profit margin right so our strategy is actually a business plan for either cancelling or reducing spending on a system. That means, in our case, when I say system, I'm actually referring to a electric motor system. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to say is that, can we do everything, whatever you are doing now, that means you just proceed with, for example, the same production rate, that means you still produce the number of pieces uh, per hour, whatever the production rate that you have, but at lesser, energy consumption by electric motor system. Can we do that? Yes. Then what are the options that we have? These are the things that I'm going to share in the next slide. Okay. All right. Now, obviously, in this talk, I'm only focusing on induction motor because 90% of the motors in industries are 
uses, uh, you know, they only use uh, induction motor for many reasons. I think uh, most of you, when I look at the names, are mostly electrical engineers. I, I think that, you know, I don't need to go into uh, theory too much because you know that, you know, induction motors are much simpler. You know, you don't have a carbon brush. You do not there is no relatively very low maintenance compared to DC motors. I'm talking about large motors huh, in industries. So therefore, the best candidate for electric motors in industries all the while, even today, is induction motor. So I'll be only focusing on induction motor in this uh, talk. Okay. In fact, all the uh, uh, whatever the energy commissions are looking at, even according to IEC. Uh, 6034 and so on they are only referring to mostly induction motor because this is the major one that is used in industry okay now let's the first thing that we are looking at is uh, i will be talking about two things okay how to optimize or to minimize the specific energy number one is the use of high efficient motor high efficiency motor okay number two i'll be talking about employing uh, the variable speed drive, okay, or inverters or variable frequency drive, variable speed drive, whatever that we are we are okay with. So there are two things that I will be focusing because these are the two um, uh, latest thing that people are you know like like wondering whether I should do that or I should do this. Shall I shall I uh, change it to high efficient motor or shall I install variable frequency drive? You know, can I save? How much I can save? Or shall I just I don't do anything, you know. So these are the questions that always come to us. So I'll hopefully I can clarify that point. Okay. Now let us start with the first one, which is the high efficient motors. Now, when you talk about high efficient motors, okay, obviously uh, from the word high efficient efficiency, that means uh, that particular motor uh, will have uh, less uh, losses. So if you just look quickly on the uh, the definition or the equation for Efficiency, we know that is is the output power. The uh, so it's actually depending on the output power to input power. Output power for the case of motor is the mechanical power, and then input power is the electrical power, right? So the input power, of course, is the output power, which is the mechanical power plus the losses. So obviously, if we are talking about high efficiency, we are talking about zero losses. Which is the ideal case or less the minimum losses possible so that you achieve high efficiency or if you talking about high losses then you talk about low efficiency you know this is something that we know so high efficiency motor basically it is it is uh it actually the way it is the the current the existing motor is actually optimized the next slide i'm going to show you the details so that the losses is going to be minimized and the efficiency will be improved so how they did that okay how they did that so what is actually high efficient motor huh? why uh, why they call it high efficient motor? now if you look at a typical induction motor now let's look at the losses and huh? the losses okay the out of 100 percent losses if you notice 50% of the losses comes from resistant losses. Okay, resistant losses means I squared R loss. So, which is from the stator, because we have a winding there, and we have the rotor, which are, we have the winding there. So, they have current flowing in both of this stator and the resistor, and therefore it produces the losses. So, that actually 50%. And then we actually have a core loss because, you know, we have a uh, laminated steel there, you know, so we have a steel uh, because that's the best magnetic uh, conductor. So we have a losses, magnetic losses always there. And now of course we have the uh, bearing, okay, we also have a fan, cooling fan, that we will actually contribute to the friction and windage losses. Then also we have a stray load losses, which is due to the air gap usually. So what happened is the existing induction motor, they optimize it. Okay, how do they optimize? For instance, if you're talking about reducing the losses in the stator, resistant losses at the winding, so they use a large diameter copper as a winder, winding as a coil. Similarly, more aluminum at the rotor, all this will minimize the resistance and therefore it will actually improve the, uh, what you call, uh, reduce the losses. 
And for the core loss, what they do is, of course, they have they, have, they use a better quality steel laminated lamination, thinner and high quality steel to actually minimize the core loss. Similarly, better bearings, quality bearings, and better cooling fan, which reduces the friction and, and windage losses. Similarly, they optimize the air gap to, make, to reduce the stay load losses. So when they do that, okay, when they optimize this, then they actually categorize that motor into, uh, in the at the moment, you know, the one that you can able to get it from the shelf. We they categorize it as one, two, three, four. IE one, IE two, IE three, IE four. So this is under the IEC sixty thousand thirty four. Okay, thirty one, two thousand eight. Now what is this IE one motor? So the IE one motor is a standard efficiency. That means, in other words. Uh, the motor that you have in industry now, okay, we will actually put them under the category of standard efficiency. That means this is not high efficient motor, but it's a standard efficiency motor, IE1. Now, when you say high efficiency motor, it starts from IE2, IE3, IE4. Okay, so obviously, when they have uh, three options here, uh, the efficiency of, for example, IE3 is going to be larger than IE2, IE4, the efficiency is going to be larger than IE2. Now, how they do this, as I told you, the optimization, what they have done, improvement in terms of uh, the design and the, the, the construction of the, uh, the, the motor, induction motor. But then there's an exception, eh? this exception that we have to understand that this is only true for the standalone motor. That means this categorization is only done for the motor alone. For instance, if you, have, if you buy a motor, and then you are you are actually connecting that to a palm system okay the motor could be a ie4 motor which is a super premium efficiency meaning it gives you high efficiency but then if the motor which is ie4 motor is connected to a palm system which is not or probably a low efficient palm system obviously the motor system efficiency is not going to be super premium huh? so that means the entire system, motor system efficiency obviously should be lower. Uh, you cannot be categorizing it as IE4. So that's why when they categorize this IE1, IE2, IE3, IE4, it's only referring to the motor system alone, okay, alone, okay. So that's the point that we have to understand that, okay. Okay, now, next, move next. Now, uh, again, in the uh, graph format, so if you look at this is the efficiency, and this is the power, efficiency versus power, power, the size of the motor, the power, rated power of the motor. Now, if you notice, uh, the, the first one is IE1, then we have the second one, which is IE2, IE3, and the IE4, right? It, it goes, obviously, as you can see, IE4 gives you a, um, has a bigger savings, I mean, a more higher efficiency compared to uh, three, two, and the one, okay? And uh, we are talking about uh, the smaller size motor, you know, the difference can be about 10% in the efficiency, and the bigger size, of course, the difference can be about 2%, okay, which is quite, because 2% of a large amount, is also a big amount of kilowatt, okay? Now, in the tabular form, this is actually uh, tabulated, which also, you can just Google and get this from IEC 6034. Again, uh, the power rating and uh, for various uh, poles, and we have IE1, IE2, IE3. So as you can see from here, okay, for example, if I just select a 30 kilowatt, a 30 kilowatt uh, motor, let's say we focus on uh, 4 kilowatt, 4 kilowatt for all the uh, IE1, IE2, IE3. So you notice that for IE1 is 90.7, for IE2 is 92.3 and for IE3 is 93.6, okay? So obviously you can see there is about 2% difference approximately. Uh, there is a difference of, you know, there's an improvement in terms of efficiency uh, from IE2, IE1, IE2 to IE3, okay? Now, life cycle cost, okay? This is something that, you know, again, I told you that um, I, 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 when, when we talk about uh, energy efficiency or energy savings in industries, 
it is always about business as i given you the during the introduction is always about the money business because if unless you can convince the top management that there is a possibility of a big huge savings in terms of money i don't think you can even get approval to get get anything done it could be a wonderful ideas with a lot of things but then if you cannot prove that uh, there is a big amount of money in terms of dollar that you actually save out of whatever you propose there is no way they are get convinced now another point that we have to look at you know from the business point of view is uh, that we will always forget about life cycle cost okay? this is not new but we always forget to talk about life cycle cost any uh, system in fact any system that you are looking at even mechanical or electrical system that you have to now look at the life cycle cost now what is this life cycle cost is you are not only looking at what is the initial cost that you are going to spend that means the money that you are going to spend to let's say buy the motor or buy the new technology or buy the new system that will probably do something okay but not only about the initial um, cost but and also not only about the maintenance cost but it is also about the energy cost because as i have given you from the introduction at the end of the day the industry will be worried when they look at the electricity bill okay they don't they, 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 they don't i mean the top management most likely they don't even go to the production line but when they look at the bill they get worried they really get worried and that is where they call for the meeting and say hey come on we have to do something because the expenses are increasing you know what will happen if the tariff goes up for example if suddenly the tariff goes up then again they are going to see huge hike in electricity bill so that means this is the point the life cycle cost that means whatever that we are going to propose we have to look at this as a life cycle cost that means whether i'm going to propose to have the uh, high efficient motors or whether later on I'm, I'm going to talk about variable frequency drive i'm going to install variable frequency drive we have to look at a life cycle cost for example for instance let's say today i'm going to buy this motor ie say ie3 motors okay so when you go to the uh, when you go to the boss your top management and you tell me okay uh, boss i need to i think i need to upgrade this particular motor from ie1 to ie3 then the boss will ask you okay what is the cost okay the cost will be additional 30% that means if i buy ie1 it will be cheaper 30% but then i want to go for ie3 uh, which is going to cost additional 30% if you say that most likely your boss is going to say no 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 why you worry just go and install ie1 because we want to save the 30 percent why you want to install you want to spend the 30 percent right but then if you put it in the life cycle cost okay that means if you actually confirm that you know by going for ie 3 motors which in the next slides i will tell you what are the do's and don'ts when you are selecting the high efficient motors Let's say you confirm going for IE three motors, and you know that saving is going to be there in terms of energy savings. Then you actually can calculate what is the energy cost per month for that particular motor that you will say. And then every time you buy a motor, you will be able to use the motor at least for uh, average of fifteen to twenty years. That means you buy today, and then if you calculate all the costs for the next fifteen years before you dispose the motor then you come up with a pie chart and you will get this kind of pie chart you will notice that 97 percent of the cost is actually contributed to the energy cost that you are paying every month initial cost is only two percent and the maintenance cost is probably about one percent so why should we worry about initial cost because you know if it is really you can see a savings every month most of the time when we calculate is within one or two years you will able to get back the 30 percent or, or whatever the additional cost that you have to spend for high efficient motors right so we have to look into a life cycle cost when we actually decide right uh, whether we want to go for high efficient motors or even the variable speed drive okay let's go further to this high efficient motors now now i'm going to talk about 
Okay, shall I, shall I upgrade all the motos that I have in industry to I2 or I3 motos? Shall I do that? Shall I blindly go to the industry and say, okay, fine, let's start the project. We change one by one all the I1 motors now to I2, I3 or whatever motors and we are going to see a saving. The answer is no, a big no, okay? Because we have to understand a uh, motor is not like, okay, for example, now you're using a fluorescent light, okay, 40 watt fluorescent light. Then I say, okay, now I'm going to change this frozen light to uh, LED light, which is going to be giving the same lux with uh, only going to consume five watt. Yes, that is a straightforward because more or less the light will consume about the same power all the time when it is turned on. Okay, so obviously you can compare 40 watt to a 5 watt. Obviously, your 5 watt is going to give you a lot of saving. But when it comes to the motor, remember when you have 30 kilowatt motor, for instance, it is not going to uh, what you call uh, generate a uh, develop mechanical power of 30 kilowatt all the time. It depends on the load, okay? And then if, if you look at this uh, particular curve, we have the efficiency, okay? The efficiency versus load, load, uh, load of the motor. What are the load? The percentage of load we connecting the motor. If you notice, usually the optimum uh, is about 75% for the motor. And it will be reasonably a good efficiency uh, up to the full load, okay? But then when you go below, especially when you go below 50 hertz, you will notice that the efficiency will start to drop. Okay, your efficiency will start to drop. Okay, that means just imagine, just imagine. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay, so just imagine if I am going to. All right. Okay, so let's say if I have a IE1 moto, IE1 moto, which is operating at about 80%. That means here. Yeah. Okay, this is the IE1 moto. Okay. Now then I have another system which is IE3. Okay, this is IE3, the green one, but then it is operating at 40%. Let's say the load, that means, uh, you know, that particular system, the load is so light, or in other words, the motor was actually oversized. That means it's operating at a, a low light load, huh? it's a light load here. That means you can see here, even though I'm using IE1, the efficiency is higher compared to IE3 motor because the load is actually low. Correct. So this is possible and it always happen in industry because most of the time when uh, we go into the industry and engineers, they are not aware about the loading factor or what is the loading factor of the motor at the moment because all the while they see, okay, motor is running fine, but they are not sure what is the loading factor, whether the motor is driving 75%, whether the motor is driving 50% load, they have no idea about it. So when you don't have that idea, what will happen is, if you just blindly convert it to IE2, IE3, you notice that you don't see so much saving or probably no saving at all. Uh, but then how you're going to justify the additional cost that you have spent to buy the moto? Then you cannot justify that. So before you even decide whether you want to go for high efficient motors, the first step that you have to do is to determine what is the loading factor you determine you you look at it where where is your motor now where is your motor now okay if you are operating at this region of course you can actually see that by going for i2 or i3 you'll be able to see the saving right but we have seen many cases in industry that that the loading is like 50 percent 40 percent we have seen many okay so in that kind of uh, system when you are upgrading uh, with the same power value of the motor, you will notice that you are not going to see any savings, right? So that is the big mistake that you are going to do. So what you have to do is you probably have to resize the motor so that the motor will be operating at higher loading condition 
and then you think about going for uh, higher uh, higher efficient right all right now in malaysia in fact last year december 2019 as you know that we have a minimum energy performance standard maps throughout the world uh, we have maps now for most of the appliances for example in malaysia uh, tv washing machine uh, aircon you know if you notice we have an energy star so it has to be minimum three star you know so that is the maps we call it minimum energy performance standard for electric motors in malaysia we don't have for most of the countries in the world they already have the maps for the motors but in malaysia uh, in december 2019 which is just a few months ago they have come out with this standard called ms2639 okay uh, which is should be uh, tabled in the parliament it will be implemented this year hopefully then what will happen is uh, they will stop the custom will actually stop all the import of induction motors which is less than ie2 it means minimum uh, moto minimum uh, moto induction moto grade should be ie2 after the implementation of this maps okay so yeah it is almost there uh, it's going to be implemented uh, this year but the other countries including uh, thailand uh, singapore they already implemented this uh, many many years ago i think even india uh, they have their own system china they have their own system uh, some they are actually they are some some countries in fact most countries the minimum energy performance standards is ie3 not even ie2 uh, malaysia actually we are talking about ie2 right so right so that is about a little bit on the high efficient motors okay uh, what we should do how do we select them and uh, so that we can actually optimize the uh, specific energy <clears throat> now second one that we uh, in fact in industry uh, that everyone is opting now is what we call a variable frequency drive uh, drive system uh, because they want to again save energy again we are talking about minimizing the specific energy of the industry now very quickly let me go through this pump system so this is actually a pump system okay you know that pump system is usually used to transport let's say a liquid let's say for example a water from one uh, point to another point okay, one place to another place and usually the pipe system will have what we call a valve you will actually have a valve a mechanical valve uh, to control the flow so when you look at a curve here this is the pressure versus the flow uh, so the pump curve if you look at the red line here okay the red line here okay you can see the red line here which is actually the pump curve okay when when you are selecting a pump you will uh, the pump manufacturer will give you this curve pressure versus flow and this is the pump curve normally when we design of course we will have a system curve original system curve so we'll be designing it for one particular design flow rate one particular design flow rate okay design flow rate so that means let's say we are actually designing at this particular point okay then what happens is okay then once we have decided we will install the pump and we start to operate them operate the pump but then when you operate the pump usually we don't run at this particular flow usually we'll be running at reduced flow rate and let's say over here this is a operating flow rate so obviously when you reduce how do you reduce the flow rate by controlling the mechanical valve so you actually control the mechanical valve to reduce the flow rate so when you reduce the flow rate then your operating point is going to be here so this is the pressure this is the flow and you know it's proportional to the power the mechanical power developed by the pump system is going to be proportional to pressure and the flow so there the the shaded part here is actually this area for the uh power okay so we know that mechanical power is given by the torque and the speed okay in this case even though you reduce the flow by reducing the uh, by reducing the uh, what you call the mechanical valve you notice that you will notice that nothing much in terms of mechanical power is going to be about the same because the pump the motor is still running at a full speed because you don't actually do anything on the speed but the flow rate is actually controlled by using a mechanical valve and therefore there is no much changes in the speed 
stock more or less is going to be there. So you might have more losses because the farm is running at a full speed. So you are talking about more or more or less, there's no much reduction in terms of electrical power. Okay, or no, you don't see so much. So it's going to be almost same whether you're operating at this flow rate or this particular flow rate. Okay, this is what will happen. Now, in, instead of that, if let's say I connect a variable speed drive or variable frequency drive to this pump system, in this case, what I do, same thing, originally I select the pump system, yeah, pump curve. Okay, I design the uh, operating curve here with a certain flow rate here. Now what I do is I don't control the mechanical wire. I actually fully open it. I don't control this. Okay, it's fully open. Now what I do is I control the speed of the pump to control the flow. That means I still work at the lower reduced flow rate, but by reducing the speed of the pump. When I do that, basically what happens is the pump curve will be shifted. As you can see here, the pump curve will be shifted. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Um, maybe a different color. Sorry. So, if you notice, the pump curve will be shifted. Okay. The pump curve is actually shifted. Why it is shifted? Because we control the pump speed. Okay. Because this particular curve is only through for that particular speed. So once you change the speed, of course, the pump curve will be moved. And therefore, what you see here is that, you know, your operating point now is here. And again, if you notice the shaded area is going to be smaller. That means the mechanical power is going to get smaller. Okay, as you can see here, the mechanical power is actually reduced. That actually will reduce the electrical power. So this is how we actually save the energy. Okay, this is how we can actually save the energy in uh, electric motor system, uh, but then provided you have, you know, the system where it requires some changes. In this case, there's a change of flow, then yes. Okay, the application, the pump system in this case requires change of flow and therefore variable frequency drive will definitely will help you to save on the energy. Okay, okay. right. So as uh, this is the, as everyone will know, as, as far as the, uh, what you call induction motor is concerned, we notice that every time you change the supply frequency, that means we change the supply frequency to change the uh, speed of the induction motor. Every time we change the speed, uh, the frequency or the speed, we see that power is also proportionally reduced, okay? proportionally reduced. Okay. In fact, uh, I think this is also the mechanical law, the fan law or the palm law, affinity law. It always applies to most of the system in Malaysia or most of the country in the world. In Malaysia, 75%, okay, almost 70% of our load is a palm load, followed by fan, followed by compressor. So that means all of them will, will actually comply to this affinity law because all of them are centrifugal machines. missions. And what is affinity law? As we know that centrifugal uh, affinity law says that when there's a reduction of the flow, I mean, uh, when there's a reduction of the speed, proportionally your flow is going to be reduced, proportionally. And similarly, when you have a reduction in the speed, you have the uh, reduction in the pressure with the relationship of square here, okay? Reduction in the speed square. And the most importantly that we have to look at is this. When there is a change of speed, and the power reduction can be a very huge reduction because the relationship is Q. Can you see that? So there is a very little reduction. I will show you some case study where we have tested this just to give you a actual data. When we reduce a little bit of speed, you know, sometimes, for example, if the motors are always running at uh, 50 hertz all the time, and then we just reduce it to, let's say, 43, uh, sorry, 45 or even 46, that means reduction by 4 hertz we see a very huge reduction in the power, okay? Because most of the systems are palm and fan system, which applies, complies, and uh, this affinity law is always true. Okay, that actually give us another motivation that, you know, we should find a way uh, if there is a need to um, change the uh, speed, because like the case of palm system just now, 
then we should find a way to reduce the speed by using the variable frequency drive because there could be a huge amount of savings okay, in the power or so eventually the energy. Okay, VFT, I, I, I wouldn't go details into this because this is, uh, as you know, the typical variable frequency drive. It's completely a power uh, converters. Okay, it uh, comprises of rectifiers as well as inverter, major components. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uh, other issues. So the reason why I show you these slides, uh, I will actually conclude in the last uh, slides later that, uh, you know, we also have to look at, you have to understand one thing. If you think that variable speed drive is not going to give you savings, please don't install variable frequency drive because there's going to be a lot of maintenance issue. That means there is going to be a lot of maintenance costs okay, that is going to come in when you install a variable frequency drive. So you need to be able to justify. If you just install a VFD and you are not sure there's going to be a saving, please don't install it because not only you're going to see no savings, but then you're going to see an increase in the maintenance cost. Okay, because since variable speed drive, variable frequency drive is completely an electronic system. And just imagine electronic system in industry with all kind of uh, environment, which is very hot, very poor ventilation, um, very dusty environment. Okay, a very harsh environment. This electronic system can have a lot of failures, a lot of downtime. So it is not easy to maintain variable frequency drive. Okay. Now let's look at a case study. Okay. So this is actually one, huh, which is a real system that we have done. We have, uh, and it's a good example to show you the do's and don'ts. Okay. Now look at this motor. This is actually about 200 uh, over kilowatt motor, huge motor, and it is connected to a clutch. Okay. As you can see, there's a clutch here. The motor is connected to a clutch. That means it can engage and disengage. That means normally when the motor starts, you notice that you know the the, the clutch is always disengaged. That means motor will be running or starting with more or less no load condition. Then you have a gearbox. Then of course the load. The load is connected to the gearbox. So when you have this kind of system, we have to understand one thing that, that it looks like there are a lot of questions there. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, if you look at this, you have a gearbox here. And then, um, obviously, when we have a gearbox, we must understand that this is like a mechanical transformer. Um, you know, gearbox is usually installed. That means they already calculated, they already designed from the day one that they want to achieve certain torque at the low. That's why it's running at a lower speed. So they already calculated what is the speed and what is the torque requirement at the load side. So accordingly, they size the gearbox. All right. So they more, that means everything is already calculated. So if you are having this kind of system, now the question is that probably I want to throw to you, should we go for variable speed drive? Okay, initially it was not connected to a variable speed drive, but should we go for variable speed drive? That's a question. Okay. Okay. Whether it is true. So now if we measure the current, okay, we actually measured the current for this particular system. Now, if you notice, it is drawing about three about approximately 290 amps approximately yeah, approximately you see that the current is about 290 amps okay sometimes it drops but you know it's always about above 200 if you notice but of course sometimes you notice that it drops to about um 14 or 15 amps but why this is drops by this because when they see some issue with the product automatically they they give a uh, instruction for the clutch to disengage when there is a motor will be running without load and automatically we see the current will be dropping to about 14 amps but then again when the, the the clutch is engaged and again it shoot up to about more or less 290 amps now that means the load more or less if you notice here the load is actually a constant load okay so the 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 it drops to 14 that is because there's some defect some defect into the uh the the output because of the soil moisture and so on okay so more or less is a constant load so now the question is shall we go for vfd for this particular application okay shall we 
Go for the VSD in this case. In fact, this particular industry, okay, some say no. Thank you. No, by right, no. But then this industry actually they install a VFD. Okay, that's why you know when you when you uh, someone approach you from the uh, industry, especially the uh, sales person from variable speed drive company, you please be careful with these people. Okay, they will actually come and convince you, and they will say thirty percent saving. I have no idea until today why thirty percent. Okay, why they always use the word thirty percent. They will always convince you. Say, oh, no issue. We can reduce thirty percent. In fact, they this things happen to this company. They convince the boss and they install the variable speed drive for this. And what they did? What they did? They actually set the frequency to forty-eight hertz. Okay. Remember, this is a more than two hundred kilowatt motor. That means the the VFD was about 500 horse power, okay? 500, be huge, very huge, okay? That means they spend a lot of money and they have to place the VFD in a special room with air conditioning. Uh, so, and then they set the frequency to 48 hertz. Why they cannot reduce more than that? Because as I told you just now, if you reduce the speed here, you are going to give a low speed here, which is going to have an impact on the load. So what they did is they just reduce it a little bit by two hertz, assuming that, okay, we can see a saving. But there is no saving at all. There is no saving at all because eventually after about one month, the company has actually complained and they actually bring this back to 50 hertz. That means now, this particular system is running with a VFD at 50 years as normal. That means you have to maintain the VFD, you have to pay additional cost for the air conditioning system, you have to maintain this VFD which is additional maintenance cost with zero savings. Okay? This is actually example of a bad example of uh, you know where you should not be using the VFD. So that means not all the motor system should be connected to the VFD. Okay, case number two. This is again a fan. It's actually a exhaust fan. It's an exhaust fan. Also huge. It's about 120 kilowatt motor, running 24 hours, 24 by 7, 365 days, and is one of the bottleneck for the industry. That means it's, it's, if this stops, everything stops. I mean, our your total production rate is going to be affected. Now, what we did was yes, this particular motor. Uh, it's already been connected to a variable frequency drive and uh, we did something okay all the while all the while they are running with 40 hertz okay this is again happens in industry they already installed a vfd and then they probably already preset certain frequency and then when we go and ask the technician and engineers okay, why 40 hertz they said it's already preset you are not allowed to change it but it's not true okay so what we did was we actually did some uh, study. Okay, fine. I say, okay, let's do a study. Okay, we, we hooked up our power measurement meter before the variable speed drive, also the hour after. So you will notice a few things here. Number one, if you notice when it is running at 40 hertz, in fact, we try to push to 50 hertz, we notice the power is more or less about less than 30 kilowatt when it is running at 50 hertz, about less than 30 kilowatt. But the motor is 120 kilowatt motor. That's huge. That's huge. That means, as I told you just now, this motor is actually driving about 30% loading. That means it's running at a very low efficiency all the time. All the time. 120 kilowatt is taking only about 30 kilowatt when it's running at 50 hertz. Okay? That's number one. The motor is oversized. It's running at a light load. Number two, if you notice, it is always running at 40 hertz. So what we did was, we said, okay, let's reduce the frequency by two hertz. Let's run at 38 hertz. And then we found, wow, look at the reduction of the power. From 24.9, it reduced to 19.9, just by reducing two hertz. That means in this case, there is no additional cost involved because VFD is already there, motor is already there. You just have to go there and just do some simple settings, you know, and then reduce it to two words. 
But in immediately you see that reduction in the power. And we see that the system works fine. Two hertz makes no difference in terms of production rate. But then in terms of energy saving, there's a huge significant saving. As I said, it's 24 by 7, 365 days working. Okay, so so what we suggest in this case is, of course, it's a good thing. We say you must optimize the frequency, see whether you can reduce further. Number two, the motor is completely oversized. If you can reduce the size of the motor, probably you can have better efficiency. You can further reduce the uh, kilowatt basket. Right? So this is the exhaust fan that we I mentioned just now to you. Okay, as a conclusion, okay. So as I mentioned to you that uh, <clears throat> when it comes to motor, it is a dynamic load. We have to understand the efficiency depends on the loading. Okay, and therefore high efficient motor should be a secondary option. Okay, don't blindly change it to high efficient motors because it may not give you any savings. Okay, so you have to look at a loading condition first. Make sure that you optimize the current system. Make sure that it runs at 70% or 80% load before you think about going for high efficient motors. Okay, as I told you, I, I show you in the curve that IE1 motor can be more efficient. They can be more efficient than IE2, depending on the loading condition. Major issue in industry is maintenance and understanding on the motor system. So they don't understand what is loading factor. They don't understand the ventilation is important. The environment, okay, is important. You know, the cleanliness of the motor is important. Otherwise, the cooling, a motor get heated up. That will increase the losses. That means everything contribute back to the energy and energy. okay so vfd can minimize specific energy yes provided it is installed into a right motor system otherwise it could be additional cost to the company so in this talk i've actually talked about you know considering high efficient motors and a variable frequency drive in order to minimize the specific energy how can we minimize the specific energy to help the industry uh, to stay competitive you know to improve on the remember the tariff will go up the tariff will go up that means if the business is done as usual the only way for the company to sustain is to increase the product price which mean put them in this advantage in terms of competitiveness so in order to stay competitive they in order for them to keep the product as low as possible or maintain the product price when there is an increase in the tariff they have to compensate by reducing the energy usage so you know energy efficiency is the answer for that okay with that thank you i'm done Aaron. Um. thank you very much uh, uh i hear dr gobi uh, I would like to open up now for questions, but uh, we have a number of questions in the chat box. So yeah. maybe I will read one by one. Okay, okay. there is a question from uh, Dodi Ismoyo. Uh, he mentioned that on your slide two, there is no source from renewable energy excluding hydro on that table. Maybe you would like to comment anything on it? Uh, the slide number two. Oh, okay. Uh, you mean excluding? Oh no, yeah. Um, okay, this is actually the table that we get from the Energy Commission. Actually, of course, uh, renewable energy. If you notice that we are still at the very low in terms of uh, uh, electricity generation mix, we are actually talking about less than 5% at the moment, even though we are pushing for 20 to 25% or even 30%, but at the moment is still low. So hydro, as you know, is also uh, included into the renewable energy for your information, right? So that's why it is, uh, this table is actually taken from the Energy Commission. Probably when I take the latest one, I will add in uh, the renewable energy, but as I told you, it is still at a very low percentage compared to um, the others. Uh, the gas and the coal in Malaysia particularly. I hope I answered that question. Okay, there is okay, another, there is another question from the, from the same, same participant. participant. On your slide, on slide number six, six uh, he, wrote uh, he wrote that you one said one of the way to increase motor efficiency is to use large, large diameter copper. But isn't large, large diameter copper will create more loss due to spin effect 
isn't it isn't it we need to use smaller diameter of the copper wire but more quantities uh, and, uh, and in a standard configuration to have better efficiency yeah okay actually um, yeah this is a good question actually now when they say uh, diameter okay not not purely uh, increasing diameter in in that case if you increase the diameter you know what will happen the size of the motor also can actually go up no actually it's the quality of the copper because if you look at a quality of the copper um, you know it's just like any metals in fact any metal that you take you actually have a different grades like gold you have different grades similarly for the um, copper in fact i think some of you ask question on that you see what happen is maybe i will ask i will answer one shot see what happen is this copper has a different quality copper right so obviously you can have the same diameter with a different characteristic it means same diameter with a different resistance value with different losses okay uh, that means uh, that's the reason why you know probably some of you will ask i'm sure somebody already asked if i buy ie2 motors which has better quality uh, what do you call better quality copper um, but then you send for rewinding and come back you know you you buy ie2 motors which has a better quality copper so therefore you get a better efficiency but then for some reason it burns and then you send for rewinding and come back so now the question is whether this motor is going to be same as ie2 the answer is no because when you go to you know i used to go and stay sit in the the place where they do rewinding if you notice the person who do rewinding has no idea what they are doing but they do as per instruction okay they take out the winding out they see the diameter and then see the number of uh, turns and then they will take and then they will do the same thing and they put it back and get everything and run the motor and send to you they never do any efficiency study okay and then obviously if you do the efficiency study you will see the performance will drop the efficiency will drop why because when they replace it they don't replace yeah they will use the same diameter because they copy but different grade copper when you use a different grade copper what will happen is you will obviously notice that there will be a more losses okay there will be a more losses so when i say a diameter yes the diameter is optimized but it is more like the quality uh, the grade uh, the uh, quality of the copper itself is a better quality copper uh, to actually minimize the resistance loss in the uh, data winding hope i answer that questions okay there, okay, is, there another is another question from uh, srinivasan he asked why malaysia, why malaysia did not go for ies3 standard ie3 standard srinivasan you should ask the energy commission <laughs> this question in fact we already are in fact for your information i hope nobody from energy commission here we are talking about coming up with a, a minimum energy performance standards since 2015 for your information right we are working of uh, coming up with a minimum energy performance standards for uh, motors for the for malaysia since 2015 and we are very 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 slow because uh, if you notice uh, other countries like singapore and the other countries they already implemented maps much much earlier compared to us and we are yet to in fact for your information what the standard that i mentioned to you is just a standard but the maps is not uh, it has to go through the parliament in order to be as it the means in order to be implemented so that means in other words malaysia can still import ie1 moto into malaysia still because it is not gone through the parliament yet so we have to start somewhere at least we start with ie2 obviously we should have started with ie3 but i think um we should start somewhere because most of the countries in the other world they start with ie2 then eventually after a few years they they upgrade it to ie3 that means first they will stop all the ie1 motors coming to the country after certain years they will stop ie2 motors coming to the malaysia uh, to the country so i think similar will do so we are just started so obviously we cannot jump to ie3 at the moment we start with ie2 uh, eventually yes it will be upgraded one by one thank you
there is an, there is another question from chiu will the motor efficiency drop after rewinding the motor yes if yes what is the percentage of the drop okay i, I explained to you just now because uh, yes definitely it will drop because as i told you the rewinding uh, you know they don't use the proper quality uh, the grade of the copper sometimes the workmanship and so on the drop in the percentage uh, you know we did some study i cannot give you exact but then it will be changing every time you send for rewinding for a bigger motor i'm talking about more than uh, 30 kilowatt motor or more a bigger motor we are talking about the drop between uh, 3 to 5 percent 3 to 5 percent that's huge eh? i'm talking about huge that means the one time you go to rewinding come back your efficiency drop can be between 3 to 5 percent Okay. So uh, yes, there will definitely be a drop in there. Uh, there, is uh, there is another question uh, uh, on your slide number eleven. Maybe you can share any rule of thumb uh, industry. for industries for them to understand better in choosing electric motors based on the motor efficiency uh, or, uh, or based on its size, scalability on their industrial load. I think it's more like a comment. Uh, uh, I will move to the next one. Uh, there is uh, there no, is no, okay. uh, what is the comment sorry rule of thumb uh, okay. uh, yeah uh, yeah uh, is, there any, is there any rule of thumb or formula industry. for industries for them to understand better or optimize in choosing electric motor based on the motor's efficiency like i e 1 2 or 3 or based on its size scalability based on their industrial load okay uh, generally uh, generally what happen is the motor uh, we expect the motor to operate at about at least 75% that is the optimum uh, 75% usually you get the best efficiency uh, so we always encourage uh, people to go for 75% yes if you go uh, higher is fine but then what happen is because we are also concerned about the maintenance because it is always not good to work at the full load all the time because you know Whole loading can happen. There will be a lot of maintenance issues. So, usually uh, we encourage when you size the motor, make sure the motor operates uh, in average seventy five percent or eighty percent of the load. That will give you the best efficiency. Okay, there is another question from Ko Weha. Is Seda S E D A Seda? I think I'm pronouncing correct. Also Seda, play yeah. key role in addition to energy commission for energy saving. Okay, Seda. As you know, Seda is more on the uh, renewable energy. Okay, more on uh, renewable energy. Um, that means they are taking care of all the. I you know you are talking about the solar. You are talking about all the renewable energy sources. Okay, but Energy Commission is actually taking care of everything. Not only this, uh, they are also talking about energy efficiency information. So because uh, we 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 have to understand that. uh you see for example um, i think everyone is now understand this if you are if you are planning to put a solar panel on top of your house your roof let's say 6 kilowatt for instance or let's say 4 kilowatt you you are you are planning to put a solar on top of your house roof huh? say 4 kilowatt now before you actually okay maybe you say okay this is the amount of bill that i always use every month and that means this is the amount of consumption uh, average consumption every how much is a kilowatt every average uh, for my house so therefore i will install a solar panel based on the roof size okay fine but now you must understand that before you even think about putting the solar panel the first thing you should do is improve i mean increase your energy efficiency in your house okay uh, for example there are many ways in the house for example number 1 try to have a proper ventilation in your house to reduce your cooling load your aircon load try to have uh, curtains so that your sunlight is not coming and eating up your your rooms so that you know your cooling load will be reduced you can uh, have the led lights with the uh, proper switching configuration that means most of the houses now i see one switch four lights okay you can configure that rewire that you have one switch to two lights so that you can minimize on the electricity bill uh try to reduce use of kettle for example 
try to use refrigerator with uh, four star or five star energy. Washing machine, try to use once, once. Uh, only at one day, depending on the load. Don't try to use, uh, if it is a 14 kilogram uh, washing machine, don't just put five kilo. Try to pile up for 10 kilo at least and then use it. And then, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do to improve the energy efficiency. That means if uh, originally you're using four kilowatt average, uh, by doing all this work, which we call it energy efficiency, probably you can reduce one kilowatt there. So you only have three kilowatt. And then you install the solar panel of three kilowatt. Okay, so that is, should be the best way. In fact, we always uh, push the last time mass tech. We said that energy efficiency should come first before you even uh, uh, propose the solar panel or any other renewable energy, because why should you, you come out with a renewable energy, but then you are also supplying to the losses. It's actually a waste. So SEDA has their, their, their role, okay, obviously, but uh, not particularly on the energy saving. They are more towards uh, renewable energy, clean energy. Okay, but in terms of energy saving, um, uh, in fact, uh, the, the SEDA, in fact, the SEDA and last time they call it uh, MGTC, okay, uh, Malaysian Green Tech. So what happened is SEDA was taking care of um, building. Okay, they were taking care of the building to do the auditing in the building. Uh, I think the Energy Commission requested SEDA to, to uh, monitor the work, energy auditing work. So in that case, they also partly work on the energy saving, but then uh, their main role was more on the uh, renewable energy, green technology, right? Thank you. Okay, we, okay, we have another eight minutes left in conclusion of our session. So I will go just a little bit quick. Uh, there is a question from Hassan. Is switching the motor on and off more efficient than keeping the motor running? Aircon. The aircon, for example, less energy to keep it on for some time or keep switching on and off when having hot. Right. Now, this, this is actually, uh, uh, it depends on your cycle time huh? because, because if it is um, one thing that you have to understand every time you off and on, every time you turn on, you need larger amount of energy to start the motor okay? because of the load your moment of inertia and so on. So if it is uh, if it is the motor is actually going to run and then you're going to stop for a short period of time and then you're going to turn on again within a short period of time, then I will advise you not to shut off, not to shut down or switch off. But what you can do is if it is possible, of course it depends on your system, you can actually have a variable speed drive to run the motor at low speed. It means instead of switching it off, you can run the motor at low speed uh, so that your power consumption will be low. Then when you again, you want to, it's supposed to be start back, you just increase the speed from a low speed to high speed. This, in fact, that is what they do with the uh, uh, inverter technology air conditioning system. In fact, instead of uh, the compressor on and off all the time, they control the speed of the compressor so that you don't have a sudden start and stop. So in fact, that is a technique they use to save the energy, right? So the same thing. So it depends on whether you are turning on for short period. Of course, if you your production stop for a long period of time, okay, the percentage within the cycle time, then obviously you switch it off. Obviously you switch it off. But then if it's going to be turned on within a short period of time, don't switch it off because every time you turn on, you're going to use more. Okay. Yep. okay. Uh, there are three questions actually from Vignesh. Uh, yeah. His first question, I will go one by one. His first question mm -hmm. is, as per your slide number 13, assume, assume mm -hmm. in design stage, consultant over design the pumps without BSD provision in the year 2015. In year, two in year 2020, we have, a we have a huge budget for chiller plant pumps optimization. Can you share what would be the correct step of optimizing before doing material selection? And how, and how to resize the pump according to operating loading? What type of what type of measurement we should carry out? Okay. So, so one thing that you can do is uh, for the current system, uh, you check it out 
you say the assume the design stage consult over design okay you can actually check this whether it is actually oversized or not by measuring the power okay measuring the power of the uh, uh, the motor the pump system that means the the, the pump huh? so what is the uh, power value so based on the power and looking at the uh, nameplate of the pump so you can actually uh, find out whether the pump is actually running at uh, light load or not if it is light load then you know uh, it is oversized um, it is running without bsd fine now if the pump uh, is actually oversized then uh, but if it is new because it is only five years so i don't think i will ask you to change the pump because it's going to be costly because the pump is very new so yes you can look into uh, installing the vsd because that's again um again you have to look at this because this is for a chiller plant that means if whether your pump can be run at low speed because we have many projects that we have done um yes you know you can actually reduce the speed of the pump okay when you reduce the speed of the pump uh, as i said you will see a huge uh, savings in terms of energy uh, power and energy so in this case i will say first thing is you try to find out what is the uh, loading condition of the motor by measuring the power okay the power at the pump system then you know what is the uh, loading condition then secondly uh, see whether i can reduce is it possible to reduce the speed of the pump and you won't have any impact on the cooling uh, in your system if you say yes okay then you should be looking at vsd and uh, install a vsd and uh, control the speed okay yeah yes. so quickly for for his second question uh, why the output from vsd okay this is referring to your slide number 21 why the, why the output from vsd is 360 volt will the motor will not suffer under voltage how you adjust to 360 volt and is there any setting in vsd and then, and then so many questions in one question uh, why okay, power no, yes, no. Uh, when you are working with the vsd you know that uh, the output voltage is actually controlled according to the uh, speed impact because you know um if you induction motor uh you know that induction motor the torque is actually proportional to the voltage that means you know that uh, i told you that the motor is actually running at a light load so the torque is actually lower than what is expected so there's no need for you to apply for under volt actually uh you know because the torque that is required by the load is a uh, low yes if if your motor is driving a heavy load but then you give a low voltage then yes high current will flow to the motor that will actually spoil the motor but in this case as you can see that uh, the power factor is also very low as you mentioned why power factor is very low because the load is very light when the load is very light your power factor will actually be very low that is another indication why that is another indication that your load is very light okay so because it is very light the vsd will control the voltage the output voltage will not be safe for your information as you control the frequency you notice that the voltage also will be controlled automatically by the pfd usually because it's a v over f ratio will be maintained okay in next okay, question, next question due to the economic cases what do you think any yeah. chance of current reduction no way <laughs> no way a yeah. tariff reduction no it will be stagnant for some time once everything is uh, okay then you will notice the tariff will go up there is no way it's going to go down there is no way it's going to go down so um, i don't see any way that you will never see i never see any trend of uh, electricity tariff go down it is always in the uptrend or at least it's maintained for some time so uh, for me i think personally no it's going to go up but maybe not now it will take longer time but then eventually it will go up yes uh, would, you like, would you like to carry on with the following questions or you would like to i'm okay with it if everyone wants me to okay okay, okay. all right because we have uh, quite number of questions so the next question is coming uh, just give me a moment. Okay. So the next question uh, is coming from Chan. Uh, okay. Before Chan is Mohammed Rais. Okay. Sorry. Before Chan is Mohammed Rais. Uh, he asked, does incoming power factor will affect motor's efficiency? 
in incoming power factor will affect the motor efficiency motor efficiency yeah obviously obviously if your plant uh, if your plant power factor is low not only motor every electrical system efficiency will actually go down because uh, obviously your current will be higher and the current is higher so there will be more losses and your efficiency will definitely go down so your plant power factor has to be maintained high i mean reasonably high otherwise all the system not only motor everything will have a low efficiency Okay, next, okay, next question is from Chan. Uh, how should we decide whether variable speed drive should be used or not to be used for motor for efficiency for energy efficiency? Okay, the the variable speed drive is if you have a motor which is currently a motor system which is currently having some kind of uh, the clear one, uh, uh, variable uh, load or they need, uh, you know, for example, the palm system that I show you, you're actually using a mechanical valve to control the flow. So that's a good example where you should be replacing that with the variables previously drive. Or you have a fan system where you're controlling with a damper, you know, fan flow, air flow, you're controlling with a damper. Uh, some, some kind of variable load system, uh, variable load system, which is currently you are, you are achieving the variable load by using some kind of me mechanical system valve damper and, and so on and that this kind of system should be revisited and uh, should be considered uh, going for variable frequency drive. Right? next question uh, next question is coming from mohammed rice uh, can inverter from solar panel and bsd from motor coexist on the same line since both of, since both of these devices will increase some voltage to export out of energy so will these devices be racing to increase voltages so inverter from for the PV and also this inverter, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think uh, yeah, both are inverter, but then uh, they are actually doing uh, two different things for information. Uh, well, for the PV is more like uh, you are converting to a a, a voltage, a AC voltage, which is required to be connected to the grid. Okay, but Inverter that is used for variable frequency drive is actually a variable voltage, variable frequency output, okay, which is meant to control the torque and the speed, right? So even though they are inverter, uh, but then they have the uh, different uh, output uh, requirement, okay? So one is to control both the voltage and the frequency, but the inverter for the PV system, the frequency will be maintained to 50 hertz. Otherwise, you cannot be connecting to the grid. Then the voltage is also uh, maintained to uh, the grid voltage to, to make sure that it can be connected to the grid. So there are two different uh, output requirement. Uh, I hope I have answered that question. The next question, the next question is from Izen, I think. Uh, Izen or Izen. Does IE3 motor creating more running ampere? I standard, I standard 3 motor creating more running ampere. I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure this yeah, IE3 motors. Yeah, okay. What happened is, yes, it is true. Uh, in fact, uh, the high efficient motors, you will notice that uh, they will be drawing slightly higher uh, current compared to the uh, IE1 motors. Uh, but then, um, again, that depends on the, um, but then the efficiency will be actually higher. That is one thing that you have to understand because it's more focused on the efficiency. It means overall power. Uh, will actually be uh, uh, lower for the given load, okay? But the difference is not much in terms of current. Huh? For the given power, there will be a slight uh, increase uh, in the power consumption, the current. But in terms of efficiency, obviously, but then again, I told you that it's very much depends on the load. Huh? I told you that it's very difficult to say that installing a very, uh, the IE3 motors, high efficient motors, the current drawn, uh, Provided you're talking about comparing IE1 with the same load, IE3 same load. So yes, there will be a slight difference in the current drawn. Okay. Okay. There is a last question, and I believe afterward I have answered everyone. Okay. Uh, this uh, question is uh, there is no name but written electric energy. <laughs> uh, what is the maximum ideal efficiency for the controller for BLDC motor? 
maximum maximum idle, idle efficiency for the controller for BLDC or BLDC motor for oh, BLDC motor yeah yeah you're talking about BLDC what type of for, for what purpose you know we need to know what purpose um it depends on the application okay it depends on the application as I said uh because of course, uh, the uh, the advanced motors like a PMSM, all the permanent magnet synchronous motors and uh, BLDC can give you a better efficiency compared to uh, what you call the induction motors, right? Uh, but I don't know. That depends on the application, and uh, I, I think you cannot be comparing this BLDC and the, all the advanced motors with the induction motors uh, uh, for the efficiency yes, directly, yes. obviously. Is going to give more efficiency. Sorry, Doctor Gobi. He has updated PM BLDC motor. Okay, all right. Yeah. Permanent magnet yeah. BLDC motor. That means it's a PMSF. Okay. Motors. So, right. So, so and then they are, he's asking about efficiency. Correct. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. So whether what is the efficiency of uh, PM BLDC? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, as I said, obviously the efficiency, as far as I know, the PM BLDC will give you a better efficiency, and usually these are used for very specific application, right? Uh, very seldom these are used in the industry at the moment, okay? Because uh, these are the specific application motors, you know, mostly for electric vehicles and uh, other applications. So the efficiency will be higher. It definitely is higher because. Uh, in construction itself, you know that you know there's a lot of improvement done in terms of uh, uh, improving the top production, the uh, top density. You know, there's a lot of improvements compared to induction and induction. So the efficiency will be definitely higher, more than 90 percent. Because even the induction motor, we are talking about 90 percent at the full load condition. So similarly, I think uh, it can be even higher for BLDC. Again, of course, it's depending on the load. Because any motor system, it will depend on the load. Okay, depends on the load. So, so with this, uh, I think there is no more questions, and I would like to thank everybody for asking questions, and thank you, Dr. Gobi, for giving a very informational and very uh, useful very useful talk in uh, our IEEE Pest Day webinar series. I would like to personally thank you on behalf of uh, IEEE PES Malaysia chapter as well. Uh, thank you to Hussain for arranging this talk and multimedia university uh, if, uh, uh, if uh, participants, participants have, have any more questions they can, they can directly write to uh, dr gobi uh, he will be always available and, uh, and uh, we will be having another webinar, webinar, webinar in the afternoon if any of you have registered for that uh, uh, please, uh, please do join so with this so with this, uh, this uh, webinar, webinar comes to an end thank you very, thank much, you very much thanks everybody to everybody for, for joining and being with us stay home stay safe thank you thank you for everyone